friends, welcome to another episode of the Cozy Cottage Crochet Podcast. My name is Hannah and this is a podcast all about crochet, a little bit of knitting, sometimes sewing, and generally living the yarniest life possible in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I live. Happy Saturday to you. Happy Thursday to me. That's when I'm recording this. It's like eight. No, it's nine in the morning. The baby just went to sleep. I'm kind of concerned. She doesn't feel very well. She's been super clingy and her nose has been running a little bit this morning. So fingers crossed she's not actually getting like a cold bug or something because then my life is going to be miserable for the next week. I'm not as miserable as hers, of course, but you know, you know how it goes if you're a parent. If you're looking for me anywhere on the interweb, you can find me as The Cozy Cottage Crochet on Instagram, on Facebook, as The Cozy Cottage on Ravelry. There are links to all of that directly down below. Um, and if you have anything to say about the podcast in particular, questions, comments, concerns, etc., please email me. That's the best way to ensure that I will see your message and get back to you in a timely manner. My email address is thecozycottagecrochet at gmail.com. Oh boy, do we have a lot to talk about today. So get your beverage, whether it's water, tea, coffee, whatever you're drinking. Hmm. I'm drinking some tea with caffeine today because, you know... I just need a little bit of a boost. I'm drinking Harney and Sons Paris, which is like a vanilla caramel black tea. It's one of my favorites. It's so delicious. And I brewed it in almond milk or I brewed it. I steeped it <laughs> in almond milk with a little bit of like simple syrup that my husband has in his cocktail cabinet, cabinet to sweeten it up. Oh, it's so delicious. Although honestly, I probably should hold off on the caffeine because I really can only do caffeine like one to two times a week. And if the baby's gonna be sick and up all night, I'm gonna need it tomorrow, but it's too late, I already brewed it. <laughs> we have, I, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> I have project progress to show you. I have a pattern release and I have a lamp review. <laughs> Is it appropriate to say, I love a lamp. If you get that joke, you're my people, okay? I love a lamp. Um, I was sent this lamp to try out and review and it's by a company called BenQ. I'm going to put all the links down below. I'm going to do a full review of this after we talk about all of the yarny stuff, but I wanted to say at the front of the podcast, it looks like a spaceship lamp. It's super weird, but I have never seen so well to crochet and knit in my life. So when I say I love lamp, I truly do love lamp. <laughs> so if you're in the market for a lamp, like please stay tuned until after the yarny content. Um, and I will talk about that lamp in great detail. And again, the links are below. So the first exciting thing I have to tell you is I have a pattern release and you may notice I'm wearing it. It is the Calliope Cowl. It is a Tunisian crochet pattern. Um, it is buttoned. So you may notice, or maybe you don't notice, I don't know, that the right side of this fabric is facing. And normally when you have a joined cowl or a seamed cowl, you have to twist it and then put it around your neck twice. I designed the Calliope cowl so that you could actually wrap it this way. And so the right side will be facing at all times because not that the back of the fabric isn't beautiful. Maybe you want this to show, but I think the front is gorgeous. So I actually put buttonholes and got some four lightweight buttons. These look like wood, but they're actually like plastic and they're, they weigh nothing. So I'm going to take this off and show it to you. <laughs> so you can see when I take it off, it... It is twisted. <laughs> it's twisted when I took it off because of the way that I put it on while I was trying to finagle this in the mirror. Um, so here's the buttonholes. I just unbuttoned it. So you have these buttonholes and this is Tunisian crochet and fingering weight yarn. And what I want to say about this is something I'm gonna repeat later is that some yarns need a solid fabric. So like I would not necessarily put this yarn, this variegated yarn into a lace pattern and certainly not into a textured pattern because you're just not gonna be able to see the beauty of the yarn the way you should. This yarn, especially variegated yarns in crochet, what you need for them is a solid fabric pattern. It could be any kind of fabric. I just swatched a lot with this and the Tunisian stitch that I chose, I think brings it out gorgeously. Like, oh my gosh, I love it so much. This yarn is delightful. It is by Attic Spin Dye, which is a UK-based yarn dyeing company, Andy and Angela. They are friends and longtime viewers of this podcast, and they're just delightful people all around. And I do want to mention also that they do everything they can to raise awareness and support for EDS, which is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, um, which Angela has. And 
it's a disease, it's like a connective tissue disease and it's super, super painful and it's kind of rare. So there's not a lot of research about it. So that's really a passion of theirs. They've actually done yarn clubs and boxes and things to raise awareness and support for that disease as well. And I am a thousand percent support them in this. So Andy and Angela sent me this yarn a year and a half, two years ago now. Gosh, I can't believe it's been that long. This finished object <laughs> has been finished since a year ago, almost a year ago, since before Nova was born. The pictures for this pattern, I have like an eight month baby bump in. So there's two, two patterns, the spiral up cowl and this one that have me and my pregnancy baby bump, which really makes me happy. <laughs> like it's just, I'm so glad I took those photos because I felt awful for nine months and I was sick and it was terrible, but I'm really glad that those photos are going to be forever memorialized in two of my crochet patterns. So this colorway is called Vibrant Iris. I will leave a link to Attic Spin Dye down below. You really ought to check their yarn out. Not only are they beautiful yarn, but it's like really reasonably priced. Um, and I think it's accessible hand dyed yarn. And if you get colors like this, this is my favorite colorway they do. And I en enjoyed every single stitch working on this because it is vibrant and it's like an iris. It's gorgeous. And I love the variegations. Like this is like a little more saturated. This is a little less. Um, it's a little more pink and it just, because there's almost like right here, you can see a little bit of pooling. There's almost no pooling in the entire thing. So love it. This cowl is available on Ravelry now. If Ravelry is not accessible to you, well, you can always email me and I can send you an invoice. But as always, I like to give a dollar off for the first week of the pattern is live to thank you for your support and supporting me and supporting this pattern. Um, I'm sure if you, I don't know if, I haven't checked <laughs> if Addict Spin Dye has these color Vibrant Iris in the shop, but I'm sure if you sent Andy a message, he would be able to put something together for you if they're not in the shop. So you can make this, it takes two skeins to make this cowl, or you could do one and just make it one that wraps around only once. You can also make this in any weight of yarn. So the the pattern is $3, but with a coupon code Calliope, which I will put on the screen right now, and I will put it in the link below, um, you will get a dollar off. So the pattern will be $2 until next Saturday, which I believe, I have no idea what day it is. Today's the seventh, which means, is today the 7th? Thursday, 8th, 9th? I don't even know what today is. I'll put the date on the screen, okay? <laughs> I have no, I just know it's Thursday. And honestly, I woke up this morning and I was like, oh, it's Friday. It is not. Rude universe. So yes, I'm, it's just so meaningful to me to like have this pattern finally, finally be available in the world because this yarn is really special to me. The people who made this yarn are special to me. The pattern itself is special to me. The pictures, because I'm pregnant in the pictures are special to me, like the whole thing. And um, the fact that this fabric is made for variegated yarn and crochet really is special to me as well. So the whole thing is like super meaningful. And Calliope is the Greek muse essentially like goddess of muses and so i mean that's kind of how i just felt around this yarn like so inspired and i think that as crocheters we tend to do this as well we get like super duper inspired by brightly speckled or brightly variegated yarns and then we don't know what to do with them because they don't always work up the same way that they do in knitting as they do in crochet and so i think that this pattern works perfectly for variegated variegated yarn in crochet so I could ramble about this pattern, honestly, for like an hour because just the colors make me happy. Everything makes me happy about it. And I'm thrilled, a, a million percent thrilled that it is available in the world. And I know some of you have been waiting for this for a year and I just thank you for your patience. 2020 was not a great year for anyone really, but I was so sick with being pregnant. And then 2021 had a newborn and I did not know what I was doing. Spoiler alert, I still don't, but I know a little bit more than I did at the beginning. So we're making some progress. Okay, I have some, I have some stuff to show you actually. I have spent the bulk of my time on one project that I will talk about last, um, but I have some sock progress. I have a little bit of blanket progress. I have a new project um, and a little bit of happy mail. And of course, an I love lamp review. So let's just start with the socks because they probably have had the least amount of attention, honestly. 
So I have the same two pairs of socks that you saw last week. And I just want you to know that I pulled my sock blocker out. It still had the stripey socks on it from the last episode. And have I woven in those ends yet? No, I haven't. I haven't. <laughs> so this yarn I bought with some birthday money and Christmas money that I got from my parents at Christmas last year, but I had a two week old. So I forgot that that money even existed and I stuck it in my yarn stash and my birthday money from April, I finally spent on two balls of yarn, a sock set for the other pair of socks and this, which is a Zauber ball, Zauber ball crazy in the colorway 1699 Fliederduft. <laughs> I, I can't speak German, I'm sorry. <laughs> My husband would probably be able to say it because he's American, but his heritage is German. He can probably pronounce it better than I can. I just love, it's like purple. I have made a teeny bit of progress on this one sock. So last time I had the cuff done only, just the ribbing. And now I have done about an inch, inch and a half into the sock. And this is my progress keeper. It is a llama corn <laughs> that was, it's from Slip Stitch Studios, but at least I think it's from Slip Stitch Studios. The bag is for sure from Slip Stitch Studios. This was a gift from Claudia a long time ago, who is Crochet Luna. Oh my gosh, you guys. I forgot a very important announcement. Okay, let me finish talking about this sock and then we're gonna talk about the very important announcement. So yeah, I this is a two by two rib for 15 rows. I cast on 64 stitches on 2.25 millimeter Chalgu Red Lace nine inch circular needles. I do the entire sock on nine inch circular needles until I get to the deep toe decreases and then I have to switch to Magic Loop. So I'm just going around and around and stocking it. I'm probably gonna go until from cuff to where the heel starts is six inches, probably. I think that's about how tall I wanna make them. And then I will do a shadow wrap heel, which I will talk about more in a second. Okay, important announcement. Can't believe I forgot to say this at the beginning of the episode. What is wrong with me? I need to have show notes. Do I ever write show notes? No, if you've been around here, you know this. We just wing it, y'all. This is real life. So the important announcement is Stashtober is going on. It is a crochet cow hosted by Claudia of the Crochet Luna podcast. And I am hosting the Ravelry thread for this in my Ravelry group. Um, it's also on Instagram using the hashtag Stashtober21, which I will put on the screen. And you can make, you can use a whip. These are the rules. You can have a whip as long as it's not 50% done before the start of October 1st. You have to work on it during October 1st to October 31st. So it's just a one month crochet along and you must use the patterns from certain designers. So that's either Claudia of Crochet Luna, myself, Kalisha, who is the Quirky Monday Craft Cast or Nadira Tani, um, Color Elizabeth, who is Crochet Cakes, Rosina, who is Zines and Rogers, uh, Dora from Dora Explored, and oh, dang it, there's one more. <laughs> I feel so bad. I, this is why I should have show notes, but I will put all the details below and they're all on my Instagram page as well. And in the Ravelry thread, there are links to every single designer. So you must pick a pattern from one of those designers to work on. Um, I will have a prize draw from my Ravelry thread. Um, I'm sure Claudia will do something from the Instagram running it as well. And it's really exciting. I'm participating by working on one of my own patterns that is not out yet. <laughs> but you can, of course, participate by using anybody's patterns. And it's just a collection of some of my most favorite crochet people on the planet. Claudia, Clarizabeth, Kalisha, the C's have it. <laughs> and of course, Rosina. And it, oh, and Faye. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot Faye. Hi, Faye. <laughs> From uh, the, uh, the Crochet Circle podcast, I was going to say something else but it's now Providence Craft Co. Her company is just an incredible, incredible company of carefully selected and sourced sustainable crochet products. It's truly fabulous. And she is an amazing designer. So also that. So yes, join Stashtober if you can, there will be a prize. <laughs> At least on my part, there will be a prize. And if you can't, if Ravelry is not accessible to you and you can't join in on the Ravelry thread, by all means, join in on Instagram, okay? This pattern, Clyde Cow, totally would count. Just saying. Okay, now that I've recovered from my, my mishap of missing the most important announcement, let's talk about the second pair of socks. <laughs> it's living in this bag, which is also from Slip Stitch Studios. It is their sock bag, I have two of them. If you've been around, you know this. I love these bags more than life. 
maybe not, but they're really up there. This bag has been all across the country and the world with me. Claudia sent me this a long time ago and I, it is one of my most used bags of all time. So living in here is the other yarn that I bought with that birthday slash Christmas money. I have a tiny little mini and I got to find the tag. So it was a sock set by May May Fibers, who I never heard of. I found this at my local yarn store, Stash. And I also, on this bag, have a pin that says Stash, a place for yarn. And a donut that says, do not give up. It makes me smile every time. Once upon a time, that pin fell off of this bag and I couldn't find it for a week and I was really devastated about it. It showed up. So this colorway, this is Bare. It is an 85 Superwash 15% nylon blend. Oh, so luxurious, honestly. 400 yards for 100 grams. And then this 20 gram has 79 yards. So this is the colorway Maybell. You know, honestly, now that I'm thinking May May Fibers, Maybell, is it Maybell or Mabel? I truly don't know. I hope I'm not mispronouncing that, but it is just beautiful yarn. Every stitch on this is plump and delightful, and I love it. And I have a finished sock. I have finished one whole sock. Let me put it on a sock blocker for you. I have not woven in on the ends on this either, because I'm a slacker at the moment, apparently. So here we are. I think I was about this far into the heel, top down last time. So I finished the heel and did the entire foot and the toe. And because this is, because I did not do a contrast toe, I just did contrast cuff and toe. I put a stitch marker right here with, on the first round when I finally finished the heel and was going around in a circle again. So that from this point on is where I measured the foot and that worked super well. So I'm going to do that again. So again, 64 stitches. I usually use the long tail cast on. As you can see, I almost ran out of yarn on my long tail cast on here. <laughs> so that's gonna be a pain in the butt to weave in. 64 stitches, two by two rib for 15 rounds. This is about six inches before I started the heel. And then I did the shadow wrap heel, which is from the Soxploration pattern by Denise, who is Earth Tones Girl. I love this heel. I know I've been raving about it for the last two episodes. I'm still raving about it because I still love it. I have it memorized and I find it better, I find it better than the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, quite honestly. And it has video tutorial as well as written pattern with photos. Um, so if you need that extra additional support on how to do the heel, just get that pattern, it's so great. So I've kind of made, morphed this into my vanilla sock recipe, so I only have followed the Shadow Wrap Heel from her pattern. Um, also, if you don't watch Denise Earth Tones Girl podcast, I haven't in a while because I don't get to watch any podcasts really because Nova's around me all the time. We're trying not to do too much screen time with her, but she has just the most calming, like accepting presence. Um, and it's truly like every time I listen to her, I feel better. Even if I'm having a great day, like she improves my day because her voice and her presence are so beautiful. <laughs> Like she, just the way that she supports people and accepts them and teaches them. Like I I love Denise from Earth Thrones Girl and you really should love her too. I'll leave a link to her podcast below. <sighs> Again, this is why I have show notes so I don't forget to put links. I'm saying I'm putting a lot of links, aren't I? <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> so yeah, um, I just worked down, do the shadow wrap heel. So I do 64 stitches, 15 rounds of ribbing. This, as long as I want it, if I'm making short, shorty socks, I'll maybe do another 15, 12 to 15 rounds of socinette before the heel. Then I usually knit the foot about five and a half inches. And then I use, I don't, I don't particularly like a wedge toe top down. I don't like the way the decreases feel on my toes. I don't mind it bottom up where you're increasing, but I don't like, I don't like it top down. So what I use instead is the rounded toe pattern from Din, from um, Mina, who is the knitting expat, and Mina Phillips, that's her last name. So yeah, regular old cuff, shadow wrap heel, rounded toe, and that's my vanilla sock recipe, and I cannot wait to wear these socks. So I did this, and then I immediately cast on the second one. I am through the cuff, and maybe half an inch into the body of the sock. So that's quite a bit of sock progress. I didn't work on these too, too much. Most of my time has been going only to one pattern, which you will see. It's also a tale of woe, <laughs> but yeah. Very, very happy with that sock right now. 
Okay, I have some more stuff. Oh my gosh, we're already at 20 minutes. I need to talk faster. <laughs> the next pattern, uh, this is also a tale of woe. It's not even the tale of woe I was going to start to tell you earlier. It's a blanket living in this bag that says, today's goal, keep the tiny human alive. But let me tell you, that is today's goal. She's a bit cranky today. This bag came from Amy, who is a patron and a friend and a dear person all around. And I am blessed to have her in my life. It is the Omega blanket pattern, pattern I'm working on. And I was really obsessed with this for a while and then I put it down and I, this past two weeks, I was like, why did I put this pattern down? Like, it's so easy. I just need to pick it up and work on it. Uh, yeah, I put it down because I messed it up somehow and I still don't know how. So I'm using Valley Yarns Haydenville. It's 60% merino, 40% acrylic. You can get this from Webs. I had four balls. I did the math and I ordered four more balls to make this baby size blanket. When this pattern comes out, it will be graded from like preemie size all the way to king size blanket. So this is the pattern. This is where I was last time, the stitch marker. And I've put on a couple of inches, not that much, like a third of a ball of yarn maybe. It has called Omega because it has all these little O's. <laughs> and it's called Omega after the one of the clones in Star Wars Clone Wars, Bad Batch animated TV series. And if that's not a deep dive, I don't know what is, but I thought it was perfect call it the Omega blanket because it has O's and it call it after Omega. So I was working, I picked this up, was working on it and I was like, why did I put this down? Like I so enjoy working on this because somehow I added a couple stitches or some, yeah, I added a couple stitches and for the life of me, like I ripped out this part of the blanket multiple times. I have no idea where the extra stitch came from because the pattern does not call for an extra stitch. None of the rest of the blanket has an extra stitch. I, I could not figure it out. And now admittedly, I only get to work on this at night after Nova goes to bed when I'm pretty tired already. So I'm sure if I had worked on this at like eight in the morning, I could have figured it out, no problem. But I remembered as soon as I started crocheting that I put it down because I was super frustrated with it because I couldn't figure out where the extra stitch came from. I worked on it a couple, couple nights, still couldn't figure it out. And you know what I did? I fudged it. I just decreased the stitch out. And now I'm back on track with the right stitch count and it works. I'm telling you it's not wrong with the pattern because this much of the blanket is totally fine. Oh, it looks like we've got a little bit of a dye lot separation here, don't we? I didn't even notice that until, you, it's not that visible in real life. <laughs> Interesting. I think you can see that this one's a little brighter. Oh well, who cares? It's a blanket, no big deal. No one's gonna drag it around the house. I don't care. So yeah. I remembered that I was really frustrated because this blanket was misbehaving. But now we are back on track. And tonight, um, a couple of girlfriends are coming over so we can watch America's Next Top Model. We're currently on season five out of like 15 seasons that are on Hulu. So we're in 2005, I think, 2006. <laughs> it's crazy to see these fashions, let me tell you. But this is what I like to work on on Thursday nights because it's, again, so easy. And I didn't work on it last Thursday. Why did I do that? Oh yeah, because this blanket has been misbehaving. Do you have patterns like this? What is the last pattern that has misbehaved on you? Comment below, I need to know. The next pattern I'm going to show you is brand new. In fact, I have only swatched. It is living in uh, one of my favorite bags. This is, says Feminist Knit Club, Rosette. Of course, there's crochet in here, not knitting. This, <coughs> oh God, <coughs> I got just got tea down the wrong pipe. So to fix this, I'm gonna drink more tea. This bag is from Nerdbird Minkery. She, I got this two years ago. She's been doing these for quite a while. And I, when she announced these, started saving my money, saving my pennies so I could get one. And she only did like, she would drop like 20 of them at a time every couple of months, maybe. And so it took a really long to like, I had, I think, it, I think this bag was like 50 bucks or something. Um, I don't even remember now, but I really, 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 really wanted one. And so I just saved up until I had the amount of money and then I just waited. And I think it took me six months to get a hold of one of these. But I got one and it's huge. It's made of canvas. It has like a, well, I wanna say wax canvas bottom and it's like white on the inside. It does have a po two pockets on the inside as well. And what is living in here is going to be a wrap, a crochet wrap. It's going to be called Belong. 
and the yarn that I am using was a gift from a patron and viewer of this podcast named Amanda a long time ago. I've had this in my stash waiting for the perfect project. And I know people, like some people don't like to have yarn or buy yarn that they don't have specific projects for. I truly, as soon as I had this stitch pattern and I thought about it, I was like, oh my gosh, like I know what yarn to use for this. And it was this yarn that has just been waiting in my stash for probably, it's probably been two years now that she sent me this yarn. Um, and it's ice yarns. The only issue with ice yarns that I have is that I, I do not know what color this is. And I really hesitate to design a pattern in a color that you can't get a hold of because this colorway, I went on the ice yarns website, it's not there anymore. And it doesn't have like a dye lot or anything on the tag. It's ice yarn, hand dyed sock yarn. 75 wool, 25 nylon, and 100 grams for 400 meters. But it, there's no dye lot or anything on these tags. And I even went over this with like a magnifying glass. Does anyone know what color this is? <laughs> because I don't. So I have four balls of this and they all fit in here with plenty of room. And so this is going to be a four ball, four skein project. It's going to be a wrap on the bias and this is my squatch. So as you can see, we've got some ribbing sections and then we have this texture section as well. Let's see if that's a little better, I can get it to focus. So it's going to have textural interest and um, yarn interest. I mean, you, it would probably show up a little bit better if I used a solid colored yarn, but this yarn is not so variegated that it completely obscures the texture. Um, in fact, I think it kind of adds something. So it's going to be a wrap on the bias with lots of texture. And you can see in my swatch that I was not paying attention and definitely added way too many stitches over here. So it's like not, <laughs> it's not working, but I have done some calculations and some math. And I think that I should be able to get 20 inches wide and 72 inches long with these rows out of four skeins of yarn. And the ice yarn sock yarn is very, very reasonably priced. Um, and I know many of you actually, I feel like I've heard from some of you that like you have this yarn in your stash and you aren't sure what to do with it. This will be a project for that. So I've been holding off on starting the actual wrap itself because all of my attention has been going to one other project, but I did my swatch and I did all of the math and I'm just super duper happy with it. And this is going to be called Belong. <gasps> Love it. So, that's the second to last project. One more project to go. This is a bit of a tale of woe because I had to rip it out. And I almost didn't work on this after that, but then I just had to. Like for some reason, this is the project that I wanted to put all my time into. You know how last time I was like, all I wanted to do was knit on the Skyrim cardigan? I haven't touched it. But this project has gotten all the love. So this bag and this yarn came from Innie. And I've never used this yarn before. It's called Durable Color Cake. It's a cotton acrylic blend. And I will put a link below to a shop that I found that um, you can get this yarn from. It's called Durable Color Cake. It's made in Turkey. You get 250 grams and 1,000 meters. And so it's 15, 55% cotton and 45% acrylic. And this color is upside down pineapple. So I weighed this last night. I'm about halfway through this cake, 250 grams. Let me tell you about this stupid, <laughs> I was so irritated. And it's not even the fault of the yarn. It's totally my fault because I did swatches, right? And I showed you last time, I think I was to this point in the ribbing last time. And then I worked all the way up past the next section of ribbing. And then I realized I needed to rip it out because the way that I had graded the pattern would not have used the most yarn and it was going to leave like a lot of yarn left over and the shawl was gonna to be too small. So I had to redo some numbers and I honestly thought about fudging the, the sample and then I was like, I can't, I can't do it. So I ripped out 80 grams of yarn that took me a whole weekend, like, and by weekend, I mean like Thursday night, Friday, Saturday and Sunday to crochet. I ripped all of that out. And then I was very mad at this project for a couple of days, but it's still the only thing I wanted to work on. So I ripped out back to here. So 
I essentially ripped out all of this. And then I started again. And now we are into the dark blue. So you can see that it changes colors. I've really liked working with this yarn. It's um, it's very, it's like super soft. Sometimes cotton will give you like a, like make your hands stiff because it doesn't have that stretch. But I think because it has the acrylic in it, it's like easier on my hands. I do find that the yarn is a little bit splitty. So just an FYI, maybe you would have more trouble knitting with it than crocheting. And of course it got frogged and then redone. So I don't think there's any problem with that. The only complaint I have, and you know I'll give you my honest review about everything, is that where the, ch it changes by changing the color of one strand at a time, and they've just tied on a new one. Now, I've never used a, a cake like this before, so I don't know if this is normal or not. Is this normal to just tie on another color? So you can see I've got three ends where the colors have changed already. So there's gonna be probably two, two more, which is fine, I can weave them in, but like I, I certainly don't trust the knot that they did on their thread and it would stick out anyway, so I have to weave these in. So if you're looking to do this, get this yarn as like an avoidance of weaving in ends, not gonna help you. But I think that it's worth it still because of the color changes. This shawl is going to be called the Sunset Beach Shawl. Sunset Beach is a beautiful little beach that's only a few miles away from my house, maybe five miles. I do officiate a lot of weddings there because it's just gorgeous. And I, this yarn I think is perfect. Like it's got the sun and then you get darker and darker and darker as you get away from the sun. And then it's gonna get even darker towards the end. So I really, really love it. Now the rows are pretty long. <laughs> so we're getting to the point where the rows themselves take forever, but that's fine, that's fine. The other thing I wanted to say about this is that I'm designing this shawl. You can of course use any yarn you want as you can with any crochet pattern but I'm designing this shawl to be used with a color changing color cake because I know so many of us buy those or have them in our stash and we don't know what to do with them. And I feel like this is a, a huge problem, not just with crochet, but with knitting, I'm sure as well. Like what do we do with these yarns that we buy that are very specific? And I've heard other podcasters, I've heard other people say, you know, I'm just not buying yarn like that anymore because I don't know what to do with it. It doesn't speak to me. This is what you can do with it. You can make a shawl designed to use 250 grams of this gradient kind of color changing yarn. This is a pattern, and this is not the only pattern that I've designed like this. Like this, this pattern is designed, the Calliope cowl, to use specifically <laughs> variegated yarn to make it shine and crochet, just like you would use stockinette yarn in knitting. So let me put this away, and I'm going to show you two other patterns that are like this that I've designed because I it's one of the things I really like doing is giving that yarn that's been sitting in your stash that you don't know what to do with a purpose. So here's another one. This is not, this is kind of heavily variegated and heavily speckled. This is my Bellatrix shawl. Again, solid, solid fabric, no texture, but you have these structural details with the points. And forgive that they're a little curly. This has been shoved in a drawer. <laughs> so I really need to re-block this before I wear it. But like, if you have a super heavily speckled or variegated yarn, it would look perfect in this because this is made out of short rows. So you're not gonna have any color pooling because the stitch count is always changing. And the fabric is solid, so it will really show off that yarn. This is Moon Tower Dye Works, one of my favorite dyers on the planet. Like I think what she does with it color is truly incredible. Um, and she's a delightful person as well. So like if you have really heavily speckled yarns or really variegated yarns, the Bellatrix shawl, you can totally work and you're not gonna have all of that pooling that sometimes is hard for crochet. The other one I wanna show you is the Nihilus Cowl. This is also a super heavily speckled yarn. This I believe was Malabrigo um, and it's kind of orange with purple on top. Um, it looks a little bit like orange and black when you hold it away. So it's like a perfect Halloween cowl. But again, very good for speckled or variegated yarns because you start at the bottom and you're increasing 
all the way almost to the end. So the chances of pooling are gonna be much reduced because the stitch count is changing. The more you have the same stitch count, the more your yarn will pool um, or is more likely to pool. And it has a little bit of a lace pattern, this eyelet pattern, um, but it's big enough <laughs> that you can actually see the lace pattern even though the yarn is variegated. There is a tiny amount of seaming at the end of this, just right there. So this is my, I should be wearing this for Halloween for sure. So it's just a long and it takes one skein of fingering weight yarn. I know we all have those in our stash. And in fact, that is why this is named Nihilus because Darth Nihilus, nerd alert, Darth Nihilus is a person in the Star Wars universe who is consumed by hunger. Like he needs the force. He like feeds on the force of people. And he just has to have it. Like has to have whatever other people have. So he's like always hunting people and consuming their force. He's just so hungry. And I feel like that's the way most of us feel <laughs> when we see one single skein of beautiful fingering weight yarn, we're like, I have to have it. And then we have it, we have no idea what to do with it. Do this. It goes down to like, my belly button is here. So it goes down to like right below my bust. So my bust line is here. So maybe another couple inches. This is super lightweight, super easy to wear. And in fact, I'm going to keep wearing this <laughs> right now because I love it. Pretty sure my husband just dropped his coffee cup. <laughs> if you heard a giant crash, hopefully it was empty. I'm gonna put the calliope cowl up here. So that's kind of what I wanna say, like just because the yarn is maybe a little harder to work with or find an appropriate pattern for than tonal or solid yarn does not mean there aren't patterns that are made specifically to show off yarn like that. Um, and I love doing that. Like I have plenty of patterns that are designed in solid or tonal yarns and I love working with that. I love wearing that, but I try to also show off yarn as well because that is art, like especially the hand dyed stuff that people have put their time and effort into, like it's artwork. So we want it to be in the world. Hmm. Thank you for coming to my Ted talk <laughs> about yarn. Okay. Now, I have some happy mail that's gonna wait for a second because I wanted to talk to you about this lamp. This lamp, I will put what it is down below. I put all the links down below. Um, it's like a desk lamp. I call it a space lamp because <laughs> it's super weird looking, honestly. When this lamp showed up, I was like, what in the world? <laughs> like, so BenQ is a company. They reached out to me and asked, Ooh almost hit the camera with this lamp. They asked me if I would review a lamp. And I, sometimes I get requests from companies that are like, hey, we have this thing we want you to review. And it has nothing to do with crochet, nothing to do with crafting. And I'm just like, no, like they send you a form email, it's stupid. And I'm like, I'm not bringing stuff that doesn't matter to my audience. Like I don't need a bunch of junk cluttering up my house. And I don't need, um, I don't need, people sending their form letters. So the first thing that I will say is that when this company emailed me, not only was it like a personal email, clearly not a form letter, it talked specifically about crochet and how sometimes it can be really hard to see at night, crochet and knitting. And um, it can be hard to see your stitches if you're working with dark yarn. And I appreciated that so much. And that's what I said back to them in my reply was you don't know how much I appreciate that you took the time to like actually research my channel and figure out what I do here and then ask me to review a project that will help me with an issue that I have, which is it's dark at night and I don't have, it's hard to see. It's hard to see what you're doing, especially if you're working with a dark yarn. So that's the first thing I will say. The second thing I will say is this lamp is not cheap. If I, this lamp was sent to me for free to review and to use and to present to you. I would not have the resources myself to buy this lamp if it wasn't sent to me for review. Um, it's quite an expensive lamp and I think it's worth the money. Like I, I've been using it for three weeks now. Um, I, I personally do think it's a great lamp. Um, but I would not have the resources to buy it myself. So this maybe could be like a Christmas present or it could be 
something you save up for or if you have the resources to just buy yourself treat yourself <laughs> um then by all means um but i just want to put that out there and the only thing i could maybe compare this to is the outlight but i've never tried an outlight i've heard really good things it was on my list to save up next year for a light because i have show you this lamp right here that's what sits by my crochet corner which is like right here that's my spot on the couch and it is it has white light it's pretty good but it's still super dark over there this lamp is so bright i truly like i don't know a, it just looks like such a weird lamp it's got a very heavy base so it's very stable nova has yanked on this and it has not fallen over so props to them for constructing constructing a solid sturdy lamp that will not kill my nine month old when i take my eyes off of her for two seconds um it has this part that moves it kind of goes back and forth so you can bring it closer this part goes up and down and it can go side to side as well uh, it has a very long cord i have this plugged in back here this is where the plug is and it goes all the way behind the couch cushions over to a little table that i have they do have a floor model um and i I honestly think the floor model would be better for most knitters and crocheters because unless you have a table right next to where you sit, this is not going to be helpful. Um, most of us sit on a couch or the chair. I just happen to have a little table next to the couch to put my drinks on and stuff. So this works perfectly. This has been living in my spot on that little table next to my other lamp for three weeks and I've used it almost every single day, except for the days that I did not have time to crochet or knit. It has this touch ring to turn on that's probably the only thing i don't like like i why why do i have to touch it to turn it on just have a switch <laughs> because i have bumped this by accident more times than i care to admit so you turn it, it turns on it has this and i was like why is it shaped like this why is it a sci-fi lamp space lamp because actually they started as like a desk work company so the way that this is shaped is to put over a laptop or a computer that you're working on and it creates this arc of light that like gives you more light than a regular lamp would i guess so it has you touch it turn it off turn it on if i hold it it adjusts to the light in the room so it's not blinding um, and it has this knob right here and it has different color settings so this is as dim as it can get still pretty good light this is as bright as it can get it is shockingly bright underneath like look at this <laughs> and then if i th this is honestly the setting i would use the most because seeing is hard for me i have contacts in at all times like or my glasses i cannot see i'm practically blind <laughs> without my glasses especially at night um i would always have it on the brightest setting because i love light to be able to see um, but sometimes we're watching a movie or something and it's just too bright because the TV is over there. So if I do this, it like adjusts it to the temperature of the room. So it's still super bright underneath, but it's not like blinding the rest of the room. Um, what else do I want to say? If I wanted to go back to whatever setting, I just hit this. So yeah, touch, <laughs> touch it to turn it on and off. That's the only part I don't understand. Like just what, why don't we have it? Just put a switch right here or here or something. I can just be like, dink. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm not hip with the times y'all. So, I mean, really what I have to say is I love lamp. I have never seen so well my crochet stitches. So the design is a bit strange, but my only complaints are the design is a little bit weird. <laughs> I understand it totally for like laptop and desk work. Um, it is a, it's a weird addition to the living room. Um, I think the floor model would probably be better for most knitters and crocheters, unless you have a table next to your spot, like I do, and it is pricey. So those are possibly the cons. The pros are, oh my God, the light, <laughs> the sturdy design, which my baby has not been able to knock over or disturb in any fashion. The very long cord, which I appreciate very much because there's not a lot of plugs in this house. And did I mention the light? <laughs> like, it's so good. Like, I did not realize how much I was struggling to see my crochet stitches with this lamp over here until I had this. And like, I, it's so good. So I think the pros for me 
way outweigh the cons. Like, I think it's worth the money personally. Um, but like I said before, personally, like if I had to purchase this, I would not have the resources to be able to do it. Um, maybe not ever, like maybe I'll win the lottery <laughs> someday. <laughs> but you know, like I'm a pastor um, and I have a baby. So my budget is pretty limited for extracurricular purchases like that. Um, but I really, really appreciate it. So thank you, BenQ, for sending me the lamp. I'm happy to share this lamp with you. Um, as you know, I will only ever give an honest review, and that was my response to them, is I'm happy to review your lamp, but I'm going to give my honest opinion. Are you okay with that? Um, and they said yes, and this is my honest opinion, is that I can see really, really, really well with this lamp, and I love the fact that it gets so, so, so bright. Like, it's like studio light bright to me, which is amazing for someone who has a hard time seeing um, and I love the feature that like adjusts that light to the room light so that it's still super bright right underneath of it um, but doesn't do something to the whole room so a plus for me maybe a I think I'm gonna give it a solid a and I mean was that informative review like do you want me to do reviews sometimes uh, like I said, mostly I like turn people down because they just send me stupid form letters that have nothing to do with crochet, but I really appreciate very much that this company took the time to like find out what it is that we do here and write me an email about that. So I appreciate that. I love lamp. Now, happy mail. I got a lovely little package from a friend named Heather who lives overseas across the pond and I just dumped it. I took it out of the bag preemptively and of course I just dumped it across. <laughs> she lives in Ireland and she sent me, this has already been broken into, a bag of chocolate caramels. In fact, I'm gonna have one as soon as I am done recording, best believe. Um, I've already eaten like half of these because Nova has been having a bit of a struggle going to bed recently. These are Jameson chewy buttery caramels covered in milk chocolate. They are so good. <laughs> She also sent me a bunch of tea. There's lemon, ginger, and manuka honey. I do not like ginger, but this particular lemon ginger blend, I like a lot. Um, wild apple and cinnamon, never had that one. Organic rose hip, never had that either. Peppermint and licorice, interested to try. Nighttime and lavender and echinacea. So these are all very fabulous teas. She sent me um, a postcard that says, you are Little Drop of Wonderful from Allie, who is Little Drops of Wonderful. Hi, Allie. Ugh, I have a pen that says this and I love Allie and she's a fabulous person. And so are you, Heather, thank you. And she sent bibs for Nova. Look, two little baby bibs. When I pulled these out, like Nova just knew that they were for her. She crawled across the room, snatched them out of my hand and ran off with them. I had to retrieve them so I should show them on the podcast. <laughs> So she will be wearing these very shortly. And honestly, you can never have enough bibs for my child because at the beginning, she spit up constantly, constantly. So it was easier to change her bib and have 10,000 bibs than it was to change her outfit seven times a day. And now the spit up is much less. It's maybe like one or two times a day, um, but she just drool, just drool. And I cannot stand a damp baby chest like grosses me out. So bibs are a lifesaver, honestly. So thank you, Heather. That was so nice of you. And then the other, the other happy mail is also sad mail. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because my lovely friend Maria, who is Fat Bunny Yarn, I've talked about her probably a million times. I've designed two patterns with her yarn, the Vanya Cowl and the Cotton Candy Slouch. And it's, a privilege to call her a friend. Um, she had her own yarn company, Fat Bunny Yarn, and she decided to close that company. And now um, she is a creative director for Olive and Two U's Yarn Company, um, which they also have beautiful yarn. So like, I'm really excited for this for her, but she closed her yarn shop, which means I'll never be able to get some of her yarn ever again. And so I, was like, well, I have to order a skein because this is like the only time I'm ever going to get to squish her yarn. 
um, in this fashion. I know she's gonna be involved in making all kinds of other yarn. Um, so what I ordered was the skein in Merlot. It's 100% superwash merino, bulky base. It's the same exact yarn that I did the cotton candy slouch in, which is this. I think I'm gonna make myself another cotton candy slouch. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. I'll show you. The cotton candy slouch pattern is $1. It will always be a dollar. It will never go up in price. This, and it's graded in small, medium, like large sizes and three different levels of slouch. <laughs> so I really, really like this hat. And I just think that color is gonna like be really good. So <laughs> I got this. I'm definitely making myself a cotton candy slouch with it. And then I ordered one other skein, but in the mix of like the confusion of like closing a yarn store and people placing orders, that colorway that I had ordered was not available. So she was like, well, what kind of color? And I was like, oh, just pick something. Like, <laughs> you know me, I trust you. Anything you send me will be beautiful. But she didn't send me one. She sent me three. <laughs> And look at how beautifully they go together. This is, it's all Lucky Sock base, which is a fingering weight, 80% um, merino, 20% nylon. This is the colorway Joyful. This blue in the middle is Island Water. And this pink is Hibiscus. And like these absolutely belong together, don't they? And I wrote, she the note that she wrote me, which I'm not gonna read, cause it's like personal, but the note that she wrote me in this order full on made me cry, like happy, sad tears. <laughs> like I just, and I was like, Maria, you did not have to send me extra yarn. Like I'm trying to support you. And she was like, but they had to go together. And also like, love you. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so the real question is like, I'm never gonna be able to use this yarn, right? Or it's gonna have to wait for the most perfect pattern of all time. Because this is truly like, the last time I will ever get that bunny yarn. So like this is going, this three skein set is going to go into, I have a little trunk <laughs> that has the most treasured skeins of yarn <sighs> that I own or have in my possession. And this is going to go in there until something amazing, um, an amazing pattern of some kind comes along. Something that I know that I will wear and treasure forever and ever. Um, I'm not gonna design with this yarn because it just needs, it needs to like live with me. And I know I've been like very, it's yarn people, like use the pretty yarn, use it. And I do mean that, but this has to have a very special project because it's very, very special yarn. And the person who made it is very special to me. And it's really, really beautiful and meaningful. And I'm feeling very sappy and emotional. And all I have to say is, your creative abilities know no limits, Maria. And your generous heart, I admire from the bottom of my heart. And I am blessed to call you a friend, not just on the internet, but like in real life. And we need to have a knitting night soon. In fact, I'm going to text you <laughs> so that we can schedule a knitting night soon. It'll have to be like after 7.30 after Nova goes to bed because ugh, baby life, you know. But yeah, I just, it's happy and sad mail. <laughs> and it's really beautiful and I appreciate you, Maria. And I'm glad you're in my life. Emotions. So, I mean, that's pretty much all the yarny stuff. There's a new pattern I'm very excited to talk about, but I don't have, the yarn has not arrived for it yet. And so I'll talk about that next time. Um, also on the way to me will be the crochet mag magazine Morit. So hopefully that will arrive by the next time I podcast because it will, it's like next level crochet magazine. And what else do I want to say? Thank you all for the well wishes on the last podcast. <laughs> I was talking about how I didn't really feel like myself and I was going to the doctor. I do think the herbs that the naturopath has had me take have helped a little bit. Um, I have blood work scheduled for next Friday. And then I have um, an appointment scheduled the first week in November to go to the primary care doctor and talk about those 
results. It takes forever to get anything like this done. Um, I think what I want to say though is last episode, or maybe the last couple of weeks, I've just been feeling like <laughs> the only way I know how to say this is I've been feeling like I want to not be truthful about what's going on. And it's that voice in your head that says, Why, what are you complaining about? Everyone's going to think you're depressed or you're anxious or you don't have your life together or you should be able to do better than you're doing. Like you just don't tell anyone how hard it feels because you're just going to sound like you're complaining all the time. Now, I, I did kind of listen to that voice a little bit and until randomly one day I was like, okay, wait a minute, <laughs> wait. And I saw a post by Dr. Becky. If you don't know Dr. Becky and you're a parent, or if you're not a parent, like you have got to go follow her on Instagram. It's Dr. at Dr. Becky at Good Inside. It's the handle. You can even Google Dr. Becky and she'll pop up. She's, I hear her voice in my head sometimes when I'm having negative self-talk. Like she's, she's amazing. Um, but she posted this thing and it said, parenting it feels hard because it is hard, not because you're doing something wrong. And then I like cried in the corner for real because that is utterly true. Uh, parenting feels hard because it is hard, not because I'm doing something wrong. And I want to sit here and be like, I have it together. And like, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me and I don't have any problems. And that's not truthful. Like, I don't have it together. This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. And also, <laughs> it is the hardest thing I've ever done. And I've been kind of reflecting on, because I have been super emotional, like right now. So, you know, that's why I'm getting blood work. Try to like, see if I can bring myself into a little bit more balance, like physically. But I've been reflecting on like, what is it? What is, what is something that's like feeling, causing me to feel so overwhelmed? And honestly, I think I'm just overstimulated <laughs> all the time. And, ooh, <laughs> it's fine. I'm going to cry. You'll know I'm going to cry. I love holding the baby. I love cuddling her. I love being with her. That's all true. And what's also true is at the end of the day, I don't want anyone to touch me. <laughs> like, I, I, it's like overstimulation all the time. When you have a baby that's with you all the time, they're constantly touching you, pulling on you. I don't go, I don't go to the bathroom by myself. Like I cook dinner with one arm because she wants to know what's going on. And I love that. Like I love how curious she is. I love how attached to me she is. I love that I'm the person <clears throat> that my husband and I are the people that she looks to for safety and for comfort. Like, I love that. It's beautiful. And also, <laughs> it's really hard to be that person because my body, I think, is reacting to feeling that constant overstimulation, that constant being touched and pulled and talked to. And like, there's not, there's not really time for me to just... Like what I need probably every day is like an hour <laughs> in the middle of the day. I need a lunch break essentially <laughs> where I can just crochet or knit and just be by myself. And I don't, I think I've ever felt that way in my life before, but of course I've never had a baby in my life before. So I don't know what to do about that, honestly, because I don't really have childcare. <laughs> um, but it, I think it helps me to know that that's part of the problem is that I'm super overstimulated. And I know like so many of you are gonna comment like, can't your partner help you? You don't understand how much he helps me and we help each other. Like when he gets off work, like he works, okay? So, I mean, I work too, but also I have a baby all the time. So he gets off work, he plays with her for hours. Like, I, it's not possible <laughs> to change our situation at the moment. Like, I don't think it's possible to add childcare right now. Like financially, it's not possible. Um, 
but also, <laughs> I mean, what would we even do for childcare? Because most of the places around here, like I don't, I really don't want to drop her off in a daycare because she's going to be sick for a year. Um, and also the daycares around here, like don't take part-time people really. Like ideally what I would like to have is somebody to watch her here in our house <laughs> mornings during the week. Like maybe even two to three mornings a week until noon or something. Like that would be a huge help. But of course that's very expensive. That's almost like nanny level <laughs> to have someone come. Maybe at some point that will work out. I certainly don't have the resources for that right now. Um, I'm trying to like trust <laughs> that what is meant to be will happen. Um, but like just having somebody that needs you all the time is very overstimulating to me. Um, and so just it's just helpful to know that that's part of the problem. The other part of the problem is I don't think it would be such a big deal if I wasn't also trying to work. And I know so many of you have been home with your babies during this pandemic and you feel this stress. Like, because if she goes for a nap, right? That should be my time to decompress. That should be my hour lunch break. But I don't do that. I don't have that really because I have to, I have a job. <laughs> um, and if you don't know, like if you're new around here, I'm a pastor of a small, inclusive, affirming church in St. Petersburg. Um, we are Christian based. We focus on Jesus. Um, but... We are very inclusive of all people. It's a safe space for all people to explore faith. Um, but specifically, um, we are very protective of the LGBT plus community because churches and faith historically has not been a safe space for them at all. So like they're not just welcome, but like affirmed and celebrated in our little church. Um, that was a tangent. <laughs> That's what I do. That's my day job currently. And slash night, even evening weekend job because <laughs> being a pastor. Um, but I have a job to do. Like Sunday is coming. I have sermons to write. I have people to contact. I have scheduling. I have financial stuff I've got to do. I've got, I have responsibilities. And it is so difficult, especially right now with the age that she's at, to get anything done when she is awake. Because she, she can entertain herself. That's not the problem, unless she's feeling bad. Like she will do stuff by herself. But the minute I pull out my computer, she wants to be inside the computer. Like she wants to know what's going on. She wants to be on my lap. She wants to bang on it. Like, so I end up working a lot on my phone and I feel bad that I'm on my phone constantly around her because I'm trying to get stuff done. Um, and I, I also feel I can't focus on her or work and put my best foot forward. Now I know I'm doing a good job being a mom I don't know why just saying that makes me want to cry. <laughs> but I know that I am. Like, I'm doing... I'm, I was going to say something that had a bad word in it. I'm doing a kick butt job <laughs> at being a mom. Even on the hard days. I know that that's true. But I don't really feel like I'm doing a very good job at my job. Um, I'm doing an okay job. And sometimes that's all you can do, right? But like, I love my work. I think this is what I was designed to do. Like it's the most fulfilling thing that I've ever done is be a pastor and have these conversations with people. And I, I'm not able to dedicate the brain space that I want to, to my job because, because I don't have it because she's right here all the time. Um, so there's so much more I could be doing with my job. And I'm not saying that out of any sense of like, guilt or I'm, I'm truly saying like I could I know that it's in me to be able to do more and to reach more people and to to create more content online to really like take like deep concepts about theology and faith in God and like put them into everyday words that people can understand like I'm that is a skill of mine like I'm good at that and I I, I don't have the time to do it um so I end up working a lot of hours for not the payoff that I want to see. And I want to be respectful and, and responsible, you know, because even though I kind of work for myself, like I'm the only employee of different church. Um, and like, it's on me to, to do all of this stuff. I, ha I feel a responsibility to my people that call different church home. 
um, and call it their faith space. Like I want to do a good job for them and I don't feel like I have the space to do as good a job as I want to. And that's really hard to balance. So those two things are a problem for me right now. And let me tell you, I don't really want to say this. <laughs> like, I don't want to get on here and be like, let me tell you all the ways that I am struggling <laughs> with being a mom, but it's not honest. Like if I got on here and was like, everything's perfect, everything's fine. That's not true. And I think if you have been with me since the beginning, or even just this is your first episode, I am very serious about telling the truth even if it sucks i'm serious about making this a open welcome safe space for everyone to be no matter what you believe no matter what your background is um, no matter what mental health issues you struggle with and y'all know the longer you've been here the long the more you'll know right like anxiety is something i struggle with pretty frequently and i'm very honest about that but like for some reason this i don't want to be honest about I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I don't want to be honest about how hard it is to be a working mom. But it's really, really freaking hard. And that part, that little voice in my head is like, you can't get on there on that podcast every two weeks and tell people how hard this is because, because why? Right? Like it's hard for everyone. There is no parent, whether it's a mom or a dad or any kind of parent. Who has an easy time with this? It's not possible. Parenting is hard. Parenting feels hard because it is hard. <laughs> not because you're doing something wrong. And honestly, if me saying all of that made just one person watching this video feel less alone, um, then that's why I say it. Like, I have... Oh, I'm going to sound really ridiculous now, but I've lived too long pretending that everything is fine to do that anymore. Like I'm, I'm over it. I'm just going to tell the truth. Even if sometimes the truth is hard because the truth will set you free. <laughs> like it's much more freeing and it's much less anxiety inducing for me to sit here and be like, yeah, this really sucks. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm doing a good job. Um, I know I'm doing a good job, but I don't feel like I'm doing a good job. It sucks to say that to the internet, <laughs> but it's true. And when I mean it, I guess I'm just going to say I mean it when I say that if, if me going through all of that just now and all of the previous episodes that I've had before Nova was born, when I talk about mental health and my struggles with anxiety, and since Nova was born, when I talked about how truly awful it was <laughs> when she was a newborn um, and all of the stuff in between, the, the struggles we had with breastfeeding, like if all of that just helps one person, it makes one person feel less alone, then it's worth it to me to do. Um, and maybe it's worth it anyways to just be an example of what it looks like <sighs> to live an authentic, honest life, even about the parts that are difficult and I feel like <laughs> we're over an hour already I should stop crying on the internet <sighs> maybe we can have a normal episode next time <laughs> next time actually is gonna be our Halloween episode oh my gosh I don't have a Halloween costume I really want to be a hot sauce packet <laughs> I don't know why I just really want to I gotta find a costume for Nova I went to Walmart and looked at a few and they have all these cute little animal costumes but they're made of like fake fur it is Florida y'all she's gonna roast she does not like being hot. So I think I'm going to try and find her a Minnie Mouse costume. Because she really, really, really loves Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. <laughs> it's why I let her watch some when I trim her nails. It's like the only screen time she gets. Because it's the only way I can get her to sit still long enough to file her nails down. But uh, she loves Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. So I think maybe she could be Minnie Mouse. I don't know. So yeah, I got to stop talking. This is, ugh, this is just too much. So <laughs> all of that to say, I love the lamp. If you have the resources to get yourself a shockingly bright lamp, do it. I'll leave a link down below. Um, and the Calliope cowl is out. Use the coupon code and get yourself a dollar off. Um, and 
yeah <laughs> i guess i'm gonna end it here if you like this video <laughs> if you like my rambling and my crying on the interweb give this video a thumbs up like that just helps me know that i'm doing something meaningful <laughs> on youtube and it helps youtube know to like that my content is worth watching and um it would mean a lot also if you hit the subscribe button um because it <laughs> this is gonna sound so dumb <laughs> i don't know why i'm nagging myself to begin with but um we're at like 9400 subscribers right now which is truly mind-blowing to me but whenever we reach 10,000, whether that's a month from now or like two years from now, my husband and I have agreed that we, there is a fancy steakhouse in Tampa that we went to. We've been to like once before. It was a long time ago. It's like, it's so fancy and like, so, ooh, you just, it's like an experience. We've decided that whenever I hit 10,000 subscribers, we are going to go on a date to this steakhouse and just like have the best time and we're gonna order an appetizer and a steak and a dessert um and a drink like we never do all of that right you just get the entree and leave or like we share something like no we're gonna go all out so <laughs> purely for selfish reasons because <laughs> i want to have this experience hit the subscribe button <laughs> but of course you'll also be kept up to date when new videos come on this channel which is every two weeks on saturday and occasional vlogs and maybe I'm thinking about doing vlogmas. I don't know. Y'all know I like star things and don't don't finish vlogmas like that. <laughs> Last year I started it to do, you know, document the days leading up to Nova was born and I got eleven days because she was born on December eleventh. <laughs> oh my god, y'all, my baby's gonna be one. Okay, I have to stop. <laughs> I have to stop. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each one of you whether you have been here since the beginning or this is your first episode, whether you comment every episode or you've never commented, I just appreciate the presence and the warmth that all of you bring to my life and this community that we've created around crafting and doing what we love. And it's really meaningful to me. And I will continue to podcast for as long into the future as is possible um, because this is such a blessing in my life. So, Without further ado, and I feel like this whole episode should be titled Much Ado About Everything. <laughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> I will see you in two weeks. Be kind to yourself. Be honest, even if it sucks. Happy crafting. Bye, friends. <laughs>